Hi, this is Lynns from Sweet Natured, and this is our full cruise review on board P&O's Iona. As always, I'm joined by Marky. Hello. Hello. Who put the video together, and this is my first time watching, so let's see what we can see. It's time for our full cruise review of P&O Iona Lynns. Yes, I'm not on the ship. Not yet, you're not. We're going to look at embarkation to start with. We did this cruise in November 2022. We did. And as I said, the first thing we're going to take a look at is embarkation. Now, Southampton of late has been a little bit problematic when we've departed from there. It has. With, with some long queues, uh, some issues with security, uh, even bag drop. What I will say on this particular occasion is we didn't really have any of that. They've got what happens where they rack them and stack you now. They're actually loading people by rows rather than just loading row one. And then everybody else sat at the back going, how come they're going? Yeah, we, which has been, we've seen people getting very frustrated and, and borderline angry uh, on past cruises. Didn't have a problem on this one. No. We, we were due to get on. Um, we'll, we'll see in a second. I think our boarding time officially was one o'clock. Yes. Um, and we were on the ship. In fact, we can see it now. Uh, arrival time, one o'clock. We were actually on the ship at five past one. Yes. Which, can't really complain about that. No, we can. No, we can't, definitely. Uh, it was much better than the last couple of times that we've come out of Southampton. Yes. Uh, and again, I, I'm never entirely sure how much of it is down to the individual crews, how much of it is down to the port side staff. No. But it seems to be getting better again. Yes. Yes, they needed to get back in the swing of things, didn't they? Yeah, it seems to have taken a lot longer than anyone expected. Cause, you know, cruising's been back up and running for well over a year now. Yeah, yeah, but there's more people and all those people seem to turn up at the same time. Which I have noticed much more, that no matter what time you've got, people will just turn up whenever now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which doesn't necessarily help everyone when no. like, three and a half thousand people turn no. up at, at the same time. For them. No. But we got on straight away, straight into the uh, this lovely young lady... Told us where to go for the muster. Went straight Loved that. this muster. Took a couple of seconds. A few seconds later, we were having a drink. We were having a drink. Now this drink was not on the drinks package, but it was very good because we, we didn't. We didn't. Sorry, darling. No, it's alright. I was just saying we gave it an eight out of ten. We did. So, what for embarkation? For embarkation. Yes, but you have to be part of the embarkation process yourself. You do you? absolutely. Accommodation. We had a yes. balcony cabin. On this particular one. We did. Uh, 12606. Yes. And you can see, for each of these little ones that we're doing, you can see our full reviews on, on the channel as well. You can see our cabin tour and the cabin yeah, review. Yeah. But this was a absolutely fine cabin. Yes, it's... The, sorry. The, sorry, what were you going to say? I mean, I, I'm being very giddy today, aren't I? Right, yeah. I'm just saying it was very new. Unlike Ventura, that just felt a little bit... Tired. Which was the previous P&O ship we've been yes. on. This, it's, it felt and smelt very new. It did. Well, it's only one year old at the time yes. that we went on it. What I would say was the biggest drawback for us on this, and we have touched on this in our, in our full review, is the storage space is just not good enough when you're on a longer cruise, and this was a 14-night cruise. Oh, no drawers. That's what I'm meaning. Yeah. So the actual wardrobes were okay. They were yes. deep enough. Yeah. It was a very small gap between the bed and the wardrobe. It, you opened the wardrobe door and it touched the bed. Yes. Which didn't give you a lot of room. You went in you had to get past the door, open the door, then close the door and get back out again. I was designated wardrobe person. You were after I whacked myself with the wardrobe a couple yes. of times. Yes, yes. No, it, I, that was me. And then there was the time with the cream, which I won't go into here. Where you smeared it all over the <laughs> Thank glass you. as you walked past. Yes, yes. But in terms of the actual room, as you touched on, Lack of drawers aside, yes, the TV was good. You had plenty of choice of entertainment on there. It's whizzled, it, which is a big thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, when it's offset to the bed, if you're yeah. watching it in bed, like we did, you know, not every night, but most no, evenings, we like to do that. Uh, and especially watching the bridge comes quite nice. Yes, um, it, it's nice when you can just angle it a little bit more. Also, better than the postage stamp size one yeah. we, we had on um, previous ships in the past. Yes, yeah. So, a really good modern one. Hair dryer, all the bits and pieces that you'd want. Teas, coffees, kettle. Yes. Uh, mini fridge. Yeah. Nothing in the mini fridge. No, but I put some milk in there 
and uh, we've got, got some wine, wine some nice plugs and that that's a good bit that you just mentioned then for the plugs because it's a cruise ship that predominantly comes out of the uk they do get out of australia and out of the yeah. caribbean uh, the plug sockets um are british yeah on there and we give it a seven out of ten we did yeah I say modern room, nice, but on the longer trip, the storage became more and more problematic, and, and the little room. Yes. Would you like to invite people to subscribe, Lens? I, I would love to invite people to subscribe. Thank you so much if you already have done. You're helping me in my quest to get a Google Play plaque. Yeah, we're quite a long way from that glu- yeah. Google, that, <laughs> go- that, that Google YouTube Play plaque. But <laughs> if people keep watching, keep subscribing, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I fancy a glugal. A glugal paper. <laughs> uh, food and restaurants. Yes. There is a lot of choice on board. There is. And I would encourage people, if you are interested in the food, to watch our food review, our dining review. We yes. do go into it a lot more. And the reviews that we've done on the little restaurants. Yes. The inclusive food, uh-huh. for me, was hit and miss. Yeah. Yeah. It was what you'd expect. You see, I disagree. No, my kippers were lovely. They were. And I think there were some bits, especially in the main dining room in particular, that were okay, yes. like on the uh, celebration night, on formal night. Yeah. But then on the non-speciality nights, the food was just a bit, yeah. Whereas in the Keys, yeah. the fish and chips were great, the Asian fusion one was great. Yes. Um, but it was just a little bit hit and miss for me. I mean, I thought the lunch in the main dining room was great because you could get smaller portions. And sharing portions. And sharing portions, which is great because if you've got a big dinner in the evening, you don't want to go heavy duty on lunch. You don't, and especially because we want a longer cruise this time. Um, we didn't feel that we needed to have three massive meals all day. I don't know why I ordered those. I don't know what I was thinking. Your little fishes and your scampi. I do it every time. I think, you know what, I'm going to like them. And, and then you're not well, a massive fan of you. I like you getting them because I like the little fishes. It means I get to try them as well. <laughs> the buffet, actually, I felt was nowhere near good enough. It was, there was a, a lot of the same thing. It was replicated. Well, it wasn't was divided it? into four yes. to get people through it, but there wasn't a lot of choice in there. Oh, no. Now, that, that's your wobbly panna cotta. Now, all panna cotta wobbles a bit. Yeah. This was suspiciously jelly. Oh, <gasps> this looked like, that looked like Sindhu then. It did. And I touched on it. A, a, at the start of this in, in the title, in that you get what you pay for on Iona. Yes. There is a huge difference, even more so than other ships that we've been on, between the um, paid restaurants. Yeah. In particular, things like Keelan Cow and Sindhu and the inclusive. Yeah. The ones that you paid a bit more for, like Keelan Cow. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. We loved Keelan it's Cow. It's one of our all-time favourite restaurants on a cruise ship. We we couldn't believe how much we loved Keelan Cow. Well, we went there three <gasps> times on a 14-night Sindhu. cruise. Sindhu, we went twice. Now, Sindhu, Sindhu has your all-time favourite pudding. Look at it. Just look at it. Oh. That's their special bread and butter pudding. Oh, my goodness. It is so good. I Are mean, you salivating looking at that? I'm, I don't know what I'm going to put in my mouth right now. I, I don't know the joy. And there, I'm like, oh, yes. It is so good. Oh. But oh. as I say, there, there is that massive difference of what you pay for, what you get included on, and the bit paying extra. And I would say, if you if you can justify it, it is well worth paying that little bit extra on there. I know some people don't want to because they no, pay the, like, pay the cruise no, fare. Yeah. But there's a massive difference there in is terms a massive of what you're going to get out And of I that. think in the service as well. But yeah, I, yeah. I think yeah, I agree. We yeah. gave it seven out of ten for the food and restaurants. Some bits fantastic, like the keys, like the speciality ones, Keel and Cow in particular, and Sindhu, yes. and then others, not so great. Yeah, yeah. Entertainment. Ooh. We're back to having uh, proper paper-based daily. What's going on? I love to read those at night. When you get into bed and you're just planning what and you're I doing. And I read the them out to you like I'm reading you a story. You do. Uh, it's very <laughs> enjoyable. Uh, the <laughs> entertainment on board yes. is incredibly varied. You've got the traditional stuff, so yeah. you've got your quizzes and um, they, they have kind of Cirque du Soleil yeah. type people Which, and, who practice in the main atrium. They do, and they put like little pop up shows on as well. Like that one, like the Ooh, magic one. Yes. That one good timing. Oh, you've not so seen good. <laughs> uh, but they do. You've got silent discos and, mm-hmm. and things like that going on. So things yes. that you will see on other cruise ships. Yes. The theatre oh, no. is a mixed bag. 
So their onboard show, like Sky's the Limit, wasn't that great for can, us. Can we touch on Sky's the Limit? You have to touch on it quickly. I called it the Glenn Quagmire from Family Guy musical. So that's kind of what it was like. It was. If you've seen that and you watch that, you'll get it. The comedians that they had on board were oh, fantastic. Oh, they were great. They, they swapped so out good. halfway through. Yes. But they did three different sets each. Yeah. And you had people like uh, The Noise Next Door and various other ones who had been on things like Britain's Got Talent. Yes. So really no. great. No, Noel were fantastic. Again, did three different shows building no. up through it. Noel was in Keelan Cow when we were and, and he would stop He to was eyeing up our tomahawk. He was eyeing up our tomahawk. In the Sky Dome, that's one of their other main entertainment venues, most of the time you're going to see musical performances and things, a lot of tribute acts. I love a tribute act. But you also have their sort of certain Soleil yes. performances in there. Yeah. And you have the laser shows going on as well. It's lovely. We saw some fantastic performances in there. The uh, George Michael tribute were brilliant. I loved it. Loved it. The Robbie one was fantastic. The Paloma Faith one was brilliant. I, I mean, look, look, it could be George. <laughs> when you haven't got your glasses on, it's George. Well, it, for you, it, it definitely was. You, you'd had a few drinks, as you can tell, and um, you can't see that far. Oh, that make it big. <laughs> I was just, you know what, I love George. I still but love George. We had some great performance on it, including people from The Voice. Yes. Uh, just absolutely fantastic performances we, throughout. And, and Gary. We had Gary Barlow. Well, we'll go touch on that in a second. Okay, I'll... I'll. Um, we also went into the Limelight Club. With Tom Lister from Emmerdale. Yeah. Now, you pay extra to go in here because it's a dinner um, performance. Yes, yeah. Dinner show one. And we had Gary Barlow on board who was doing two performances on one of the nights. Yes. And then two on a, a cruise later. Yeah. Off charity. You went into a lottery... Yes. It was £10 each. Yeah. And we got lucky and got a couple of tickets. Yeah. Loved and it. It was absolutely fantastic. It was about a 55 minute concert. It was, it was, and it just flew by and it had, ev- look, I mean, it was marvellous. And you had all age ranges in there, didn't you? Yes. The, the queue to get in was huge. It was. Did we queue to the left? We did queue to the that left. That gentleman doesn't look like he's got a top on there. But for me, we, we give the entertainment 9 out of 10. Oh, it was you, great. You've got a fantastic amount of variety in there. I've marked it down a point for something I'll touch on at the end, but oh, in okay. particular things like the sound quality in the sky down. Oh, yeah. Um, bars and drinks. My favourite. <laughs> Your favourite thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, that particular drink or just bars and drinks? I just, that was lovely. That was a great way to start the cruise as far as I'm concerned. Well, it was, straight after mustard, just oh, get to the glass house for yeah, a wine flight. Yes. You, you have got a huge choice of bars and venues on there. You do. Some of them we ended up going to a lot more than other ones, like Anderson's Bar, the Emerald Bar. Over the Crow's Nest. Yeah, the Crow's Nest for us wasn't as good. It People didn't seem to go there much on this cruise, so it was empty a lot. The piano was depressed. It, it, <laughs> it I just mean, kept playing really sad music. It did. Like Later on, it, it picked up a little bit. Yeah, but we went in there a couple of times later for, on, and it still wasn't great. People were doing the knitting. Which you don't want to see in a bar no, in an No, you don't, no. Anderson's, on the other hand, we went into not really knowing anything about there, and this was our favourite bar This became our local. It did. We went in there <laughs> virtually every night yes. for a couple of drinks. We got to know the bar team and the servers really well. They were lovely. They did a fabulous Negroni. They knew what we wanted, and we worked our way through the cocktail menu. Yes. You had some really unusual ones, like this one with jam and bread with it. You loved that. I did love it. <laughs> The Emerald Bar was another favourite. Yes. This is for people watching as well. It is. You've got things like the Smoke That Rocked one, which were really fantastic. Yes. Uh, one. You have the 710 Club just at the side of that. Uh, but that's if you can get in. It's not easy to get in. It's not easy to get in. And I book as soon as you can. I would also like to say all those drinks you've just seen us drink were not covered under the drinks package because we... we we didn't have a drinks package on no, this No, no, we freewheeled it. We did, and I would encourage people, if they've not done already, to check out our page you go comparison review to the drinks package. You're so professional. I try. <laughs> but we get into the drinks a lot more. And yes. Cover all, you can yes. see all the menus and stuff like that, which yes. we don't have time to go into on these full cruise review ones. Yeah. But we, we generally speaking, found the bars really good. The service was really good. Yes. In whichever bar we went into. Mm-hmm. Different 
levels of friendliness, I would guess. Yeah. Uh, like Anderson's was and Emerald were really yeah, sort but of they got to, engaging. They got to know us. They got to know us. Absolutely. I and feel I, sorry, darling. No, it's right. What were you going to say? I say the feel the piano in the crow's nest had just had a that kind of effect on everybody. <laughs> just like didn't want to carry on anymore. No, it was yeah. It, it, uh, it wasn't a happy piano. No. Uh, just to clarify, it's an automatic piano, and it just got a weird choice. It's of music a haunted it. piano. That's what it is. The bars at the back had some amazing views oh, for sunsets. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. And you just got such a huge look variety. at that. It's like. Like a proper sunset bar at sunset. Eight out of ten. Yeah. I agree. I say Andersons and seven ten if you can get in are the standout ones for us on yes. this particular cruise. Yes. But fantastic. What am I doing? Relaxation. Ooh. So basically it's you've got the pools, you've got the spas, you've got the sun lounges, you've got the libraries. Whatever takes your fancy, because relaxation is different to different people. It is, but it's a very important part of your vacation slash holiday. I feel that you need to have some Time for you, and we definitely did that. We did. I mean, we went into the retreat, what we're showing here. Uh, again, you can see our review, uh, as well as the hydrotherapist bar. And you pay extra to get them, but it is that just that bit extra over and above. Yes, it just takes you out of it. It gives you a different feel to the rest of the ship when you go here compared to the busy part of the pool. It does. Now, the weather might have not looked at on that particular sh shot, but we were really lucky on this coast and it we was were really warm. We never had any trouble finding uh, a sunbed anywhere. No. Uh, wherever we wanted to be, it really wasn't an issue. No, not at all. Not at all. But again, back of the ships for the two uh, infinity pools were fantastic places to go relax. Yes. Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. Uh, Look at that. Just absolutely perfect. I mean, the whirlpools... With their off on every minute, they did annoy me. Yeah, you get into a whirlpool, you want it to just be on. You do. Because you just start to relax, and then it goes off, you're like, ugh. <sighs> but, as I say, for a big ship with that many people on it, and it was full, uh, full Ooh, capacity yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. on it, we never, ever struggled to find somewhere where it could be a little bit quiet for us and we could just relax. Now, if you wanted to... It even has things like a cinema on board. We didn't go, but I, we did like the choice of movies that they had. We did. We'd just seen the movies that were on. So yeah. We chose to have drinks and <laughs> lie by the pool instead. Yes. And the weather but was great. they were very busy. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine if the weather's poor as well. That'd be great. But really easy to find somewhere to relax, and we've given it a, an 8 out of 10. Yes. I agree. Thank you. You're welcome. Overall, there are many things that we found to love on Iona. Yes. There the really are. And you know, not just the cocktails and the bars, the staff were fantastic. Um, most importantly for me, the pricing is really reasonable. It is really reasonable. It's reasonable for the actual cruise, it's reasonable for the drinks, it's reasonable for the um, speciality restaurants. Yeah. Every element of it is very reasonably priced. It, I didn't feel to be nickel and dimed. No, no, and it does feel like an like an old school British holiday as well. It does a little bit, but there are a few annoyances. Oh. They did run out of uh, things on yes. a regular basis, supplies for meals for in the bars. Yes. There were quite a few cocktails that we asked for and they, and they didn't have it and couldn't no. make them for the, throughout the whole cruise. No, that's right. Uh, the sound quality in it, the Sky Dome... It's not great. I'm if you're going to go as top, far as saying it really bad. If you, especially if you're upstairs on level two. It is. The inclusive food is very hit and miss. Yes. If you pay that bit extra, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's reasonable. Yeah. But well, I, I feel that it should be better for what's included within there. Yes. But overall, we've given it a 7 out of 10. I would have gone maybe 7.5. Well, we went with 7. I just want to get on it now, <laughs> so I'm going to say that's a good thing. And that's the end of the video. Oh, well, thank you, darling. Thank you um, for watching. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, and have a lovely day.